Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a go fan and go back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and a big shout out to the person that suggested this. Today, we're going to be reacting to Horror the Gospels by Yusuf Estes Part 3. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video doing your best you know this this seems very much in line with what Islam teaches and you do have that in the New Testament on the other hand if you have a person who never really met Jesus and he never really uh, had a proper attitude from the beginning his attitude is one of destroying Christianity or people of the way and his idea of even persecuting them to death which he claims he did then all of a sudden having a blinding light revelation and just that alone is enough for him to convert to this new thing that he's come up with and he's all of a sudden in charge of it well that's pretty good concern he just lost his job you know so is that a motive well i would say that it would be a pretty strong one that and the fact that he's no longer having his uh, fiance popeya she's gone out of the picture his intended father-in-law who is the the high priest is basically saying you're out we don't need you that would be a motivator uh, the idea that he has these mystic things from the beginning he, he he's actually a product of Tarsus and a mystic religion they had then so this may be some of the his motivators that in like enjoying being in charge given the orders and so on it, it all of this could be and then it could be that uh, all of its uh, bogus it could be that these are things made up by other people because when you don't know who the author is if you don't if you can't point to somebody and say he wrote it okay let's ask him why he did it then you don't really know now we don't want the people to lose hope because there is a man that is claiming he's receiving revelations from God he's a man that you can bring and examine his whole life can we talk about this man and the message that has come for the whole of mankind well you're talking about Muhammad <laughs> peace be upon him and certainly we will be happy to talk about him. Number one, Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a cousin to Jesus, peace be upon him. They are cousins by way of Abraham. Abraham has the two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. From Isaac comes the long line of the children of Israel. And from Ishmael is coming the what they call the Arab religion, uh, which originally was no difference than the religion of Isaac. But it became corrupted over the centuries by the Arabs themselves and paganism crept in and began to take over. And a lot of the rituals that had originally been ascribed to Abraham became corrupted. So when Muhammad was born, he was different from the rest of the people. One of the things that's very impressive about it is that he never lied. So much so that they gave him the title of the truthful person. They called him a Sadiq. Another thing was that if he was given any trust, he never broke the trust. Any promises he gave, he had fulfilled his promises. So he was highly respected, highly regarded, and he was someone that also joined the, the ties of kinship amongst the people to help them uh, fix their differences amongst families, amongst tribes, and so on, to end wars and brutal and bitter feuds that they had going on. So he was highly respected, and he was the son of uh, one of the tribal uh, members who were successors mm -hmm. and when the grandfather would die to take over all of Mecca and all the religious uh, paraphernalia etc it goes along with that for all of Arabia his grandfather was the chief the main one so he had a very high position but he didn't regard that as, as something to make him better than anybody else in fact he was very very humble and uh, he liked to worship away from these people in their false worship. He would just go off in a cave fasting and pray and not have any beads with him, not have any statues with him, not have any pictures or images or anything. He detested all that, which is very similar. You know, If you go back and look at the Maccabeans of the Old Testament, you'll find they were the same way. This is exactly how they were. And... It, if somebody wants to really study the life of Muhammad Sallallahu they will find that he is truly an amazing man, but, but he was a man. He wasn't like a god, a demagogue, a son of a god or anything else, but he did do some amazing things in a very short period of time to reorganize some very disorganized tribes, 
to bring together a, a harmony and a peace between tribes of the Arabian Peninsula and unite them in such a way that the people had to respect this new way of life, this way called the Deen al-Islam. And it, it, it's amazing because so many people would be affected by watching the positiveness and seeing the results of believing in one God and obeying Him and following Muhammad. It, to the extent that it became uh, uh, spread all the way out into Spain to the far west and all the way to China in the far east, and this is in itself a reason why we should explore and learn more. Who is this man, Muhammad? Now that we have a website, Muhammad A to Z. This will give you a good chance to learn more about what other people said about him. What non-Muslims said, what his enemies said, what his friends said, his companions, his wives. What did they say? And especially what did Allah say about him in the Quran? I think that this would be probably a topic for an entire program or series maybe. I want you to tell me what a ruler at that time said, Heraclius. Heraclius. Yeah, his name was Heraclius. And Heraclius was the Roman leader at that time. And he was, uh, this is some, here's a case where his own enemies, relatives, tribal relatives, were doing business uh, in this city. And Heraclius knew that there was a letter coming to him in the Arabic language. He didn't read Arabic. So he said, bring me these merchants over here that are from that area. They said, do you know this man? Well, <laughs> they were relatives. In fact, they were pagan worshippers and they didn't like worshipping one god. So they were against Muhammad. And he said, uh, Heraclius said to him, I want you guys to give a translation of this, but first I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay, tell me about this man, Muhammad. And he listened to the answers. He said, did, did this man want to be a king? Was anybody a king in his family? And No, he's not like that. Well, did this man ever want to have some kind of glory? Did he claim some kind of thing in the past? And you read the whole story. At the end of it, it he concluded this man is a, it sounds very good. It sounds like an upright man. Now read me the letter. Because I want to know who he is before I read it. Well, it's too bad we don't do that today because if you said, well, I would need to know who the author is before I read, then you would find a lot of people understanding religion a whole lot better. But in any case, they said, well, it's a letter. It said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Uh, and uh, this is Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, writing to you to call you to the worship of the one true God and, and serving him. And if you do that, then all your people will follow you, have the reward of this. Um, but if you refuse, then you'll have that to deal with on the Day of Judgment. But he's calling him to worship one God and join us in this beautiful way of life as Muslims. This is what he's calling the Heraclius, the leader of the Romans, too. And Heraclius tested his people by saying, uh, what do you think if I accept? He, first he had them go lock all the doors. And he said, what do you guys think if I accept this? Uh, and uh, we become Muslims. And man, they went mad. They started going crazy. And they said, no, we worship you. They worship him. And he said, okay, okay, let it go with that. That's what we'll go with then. I'm giving you a brief translation of what it was, but to let you know that, that, that Heraclius himself was very impressed with what Muhammad. And many other people have been impressed. And we can do another whole show on this. I'd like you to give some closing comments and suggestions for the sincere truth seeker who's been enlightened by this talk that we've just had. Well, first of all, I, I don't want anybody to just take my word for anything. We spend our lives studying and reading, and like I know you have too. What we encourage people to do is to seek information that's from reliable sources. That's number one. Trust the the author based on his credibility not just because you like him or you like his style or something like that or the way he combs his hair but rather what is his sources how reliable is he and then read slowly and with an open heart open mind and understand where people are coming from with what they're writing and it could be very good as it happened to me i used to of course as a, a music minister and preacher in christianity i was very sold on what i had until i began to really explore the sources and came to the conclusion that Islam is something even better for me. Well, I thank you for being with us today. May God Almighty Allah, the Creator of the Heavens, reward you. Jazakallah, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you.
That was this week's episode of The Dean Show. Thank you for tuning in. Tune in every week where I bring you a new episode. You can visit us at thedeanshow.com. You can book Yusuf Estes at islamevents.com. And until next time, we'll see you. Assalamu alaikum. Which peace be unto you. It's a very, very interesting um, video. At the end of the day, don't lose hope because there's a few corrupt passages here and there. There's uh, mistakes here and there because there's some good inside the Bible. There's things like the Ten Commandments that I think most people share so take the good and use it to better yourself um and for those passages that you can translate into a good thing then do it don't just say because this is corrupt the entire thing is corrupt just because one thing is rotten out of everything doesn't mean the rest of the things are rotten as well but this was very very educational like he said read with all have an open mind open heart and the information will just flow and you understand it better. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.